Good morning. Welcome to morning worship and prayer. You know, in Psalm 107, verse 1, the Bible says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Let's worship Him today. All creation speaks your glory. Angels declare you worthy. You spoke a word and created the earth. The stars are wrapped in praise. The stars are wrapped in praise. We send in You know, there was a story that I heard. Actually, I watched it on video. A guy named Gary Smalley, he came onto the scene and he was teaching a, a group. And he brought out an old violin. It was beat up. It didn't even have strings. It was really old, a lot of scratches. And then after some time, he was explaining and showing the, the violin to the crowd. 
Then he said, this is an old beat up violin, but this is a 16th century Stradivarius. When he mentioned that, the crowd, you know, you could hear the gasp and you could hear the crowd saying, wow, right? And that sense of woe is what honor means. And that's a topic we're going to talk about today. What does it mean to honor God? When you honor someone or something, there really is a sense of awe. And the original word that was used in Hebrew is the word kabod, which comes from the root word kabad, which means to make, give weight, to, for something to be weighty. You may bigat ba? And so to honor God means to give Him weight, to give Him honor, to, uh, to, to allow the weightiness of who He is and what He's done to actually captivate our hearts. So what does that actually look like in our everyday life, right? And so in, I was reading Titus the other day, and in Titus chapter 3, verse 1 to 5, let me read. The Bible says, Remind them to be submissive to rulers and to authorities and to be obedient, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to avoid quarreling, to be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. For we ourselves were once foolish. So he goes back to who they were. We were disobedient. We were led astray. We were slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and the loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to His own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. You see, we honor God with our lives because you know, God, the God who loves us, delivered us, and the deliverance that we've received, we now honor Him as a result of what we have received. And so, you notice in this particular topic, or in this text rather, that we read, the imperatives came before the indicative. The imperatives are the commands. The indicative is the reason why we obey the commands. The indicative was this, the goodness and the loving kindness of God appeared not because of the works we've done, in righteousness, but because of his mercy. You know, in the book of Soren Kierkegaard, a Danish philosopher entitled The Sickness Unto Death, um, he describes the way sin blinds us with a parable of a peasant who received enough money to buy shoes and socks. So the guy buys shoes and socks. He was a peasant. He was a beggar. Because he had some left over, he bought some alcohol and he got drunk. Right? And so a carriage came along and the driver told him to move his legs because he's going to get run over. The peasant woke up, looked down at his legs, not realizing, not recognizing, you know, it was the shoes that he got and the socks that he bought. And this is what he said. He said, he told the driver, go ahead. Those are not my legs. Okay? Go ahead. Those are not my legs. And so, you know, sin has a way of obscuring our vision and causing us to forget what we actually have and what we have received. You see, the problem is this. We are sinners saved by grace. And yes, we are sinners saved by grace, but don't stop there. I realize, yes, we're broken, we're flawed, and that's all true. But we're more than that. We are God's children who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. And so now as an imperative, he tells Titus, Paul telling Titus, he said, because you're now God's children, we behave as one of His. Submit to rulers, to authorities, be obedient, be ready for every good work. We speak evil of no one. We avoid quarreling. We are gentle. We show courtesy to all. And so these things we're told. And so that's a question we want to be able to ask ourselves. Are we gentle? Right? Uh, speaking evil of no one. It's so easy to speak evil of people today because whether that will be online or because even just behind people's back. Um, submitting to authority and obeying. Um, you know, it's easy now to just blow off commands or instructions and thinking, I want to do it the way I want to do it because you do you, I want to do me, right? And so you have no right over me. And however that would actually end up being applied to life. Speaking evil, being gentle, kindness. Let me tell you, that's such a precious commodity these days. Uh, it's such an, um, an overused word, yeah, maybe. It may be a very simple, um, simple word, but it's something that is necessary and needed these days. Kindness. And that's the fruit of the Spirit, if you'd remember. 
And to apply it for us today, let me give you a few applications. We'll bring application. Number one, question. Do I submit to governing rulers and authorities? Is this something that is still strong in my heart today? And I realize we can give a lot of reasons not to do this. But when Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar. And yes, that refers to taxes. But even submitting to rules and the governing authorities God placed over us. Um, I understand there's clearly there's injustice and all that and there's corruption. And we want to pray that the Lord will fix that. But in the moments when we're called to submit to governing rulers and to be able to righteously follow and be subservient subservient are we doing that second question do i obey god's word and it's a good question to ask because um, as some of you here you've been walking with jesus for a long time some of you here you're quite new and so obeying the word of god is a clear indication the bible says if you love me you will obey my commands jesus said clear indication of our heart and our love for God. Not so that we can gain favor, not so that we can earn salvation, but because we are saved, then Lord, we show our love for you by obeying your word. Another question, am I always ready for every good work? Am I ready for it? Um, it's, it's easy to receive goodness, but sometimes it's a challenge to dispense of that goodness to other people. But because of the goodness we've received from Him, we are more than empowered and enabled to be good and to, and to be able to uh, express that goodness to other people. Do I catch myself speaking evil about someone? Right? And it's another good question. Okay? We, uh, we will be accountable for every word that we speak, Jesus says. Am I quarrelsome? And it's a good question to ask. You know, uh, sometimes we're very quick to push back. And it's not a bad thing to do that. But the spirit and the motivation, we have to check. What ways can I be gentle to others? Um, how can I show this gentleness? How can I practice gentleness in the way my words? In how I act upon uh, and, and, and talk to people? And how I... Um, in the office, right? Gentleness in the campus, in your school. Is gentleness evident there? Or there's harshness? Or there's things that you know will not be beneficial to those who hear? And then finally, how can I be courteous? How can I be somebody who um, will, be, will bring politeness, will be courteous, would be, would be honoring to people? And so, as I close, I just wanted to say that, that because of the kindness of God and the mercy of God that showed up, this is who we were, as Paul said to, to Titus. Because of that, now we've changed. God changed us. We've been set apart so that now we live a life that bring honor to our God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this moment of opportunity for us to look at our own lives to take a peek and even an x-ray, a spiritual x-ray of sorts. So Lord, because you've saved us, because of your mercy, Lord, we can dispense of that mercy to other people. Because we've been shown grace, we can show grace to the people that we've, uh, we interact with every day. Lord, are we quarrelsome? If we're, we have been, Lord, we repent. Or have we been gentle? And if we have not been, Lord, we repent. We turn around, we turn around Lord, and and turn to you for your grace and for your help at, just at this time. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. We send in all of you. We send in all of you. Here in your presence we send
Thank you again for joining us. And let me close with this prayer. May the God of hope fill you with all joy, all joy and all peace in believing so that you may abound in hope. I pray that the Lord will allow you to abound in hope today and in the coming days by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.